Hi, plant friends. We're cooking garden to table today on Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Hi, plant friends. Welcome to Mama Fiella's kitchen. Thanks for having us, Mom. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> So there was an episode on the Blue and Girl Radio podcast this week titled Garden to Table where I interview a bunch of different chefs about their favorite herb inspired recipes because it's growing season and we've got all these herbs in our gardens and now we want to figure out how to get those herbs in our bellies. Mom has come from a line of Italian women who have always had their own kitchen gardens and cooked with what they've grown. So how do I not have mom featured on this episode, Mama Faella? So today, Mom, we're going to be making... Um, first, we're going to make uh, my mother, uh, Noni Luciana's, rosemary bolognese sauce. And then we're going to make a beautiful um, sage and butter sauce that we can put on potatoes or gnocchi or whatever you like because it's really delicious. So let's go get in Fiala Farm, harvest some herbs. I'll give you guys some pruning tips for harvesting and then we'll come back here and get cooking. Sound good? Sounds great. So I wanna give you two pruning tips before we just hack this stuff and get it cooking. One, if you're pruning throughout the gardening season, you wanna chop the top of the plant off because this is the apical bud. This controls all of the growth up and down the stem. When you cut this off, it allows the rest of the stem to push out new growth. That's plan number one. Plan number two when pruning is you never wanna prune more than one third of the plant. So with the one third rule, I'm looking at the one thirds in two different ways. I'm looking at the whole plant. I don't wanna prune more than a third of the whole plant because that would shock the plant. And I don't wanna prune more than a third of the actual length of the stem. Those kind of two rules of thumbs will help you keep the plant still growing bushy and being able to harvest as much as you want, but also not shock the plant too much when you go into harvest. Mom likes to grow a lot of different varieties of sage in her garden. So as you can see, like look at the difference of those two leaves. This one is way more a wider leaf, a little fuzzier, a little bushier. This is a little skinnier. So we're gonna cut both so we have two different flavors in the sauce. So you know that my mom is a big edible landscaper. So I just wanted to point out, we've got the rosemary here. She's got a beautiful bed of herbs that are surrounding her hydrangea bush. She's got holly over there and the most epic cucumber plant climbing the holly and the hydrangea throwing off these insane cucumbers. So now we're at my mom's rosemary bush. She's been pruning this pretty heavily throughout the year because uh, throughout the summer because we love rosemary. So I'm going to stay through that one third rule. One third of the top. One third of the top. Oh. Oh, smells amazing. Let's go cook. Okay, mom, I'm gonna finish dicing this onion. Why don't you tell our plant friends what this recipe calls for and what we're gonna do? Okay, well, the first step is we've gotta get all our ingredients prepped as Maria's doing so uh, kindly. Um, if you have problems cutting onions, you should wear a pair of sunglasses while cutting them. It prevents the oils from getting in your eyes and making you cry. I know, I'll probably be crying in like five, <laughs> in five seconds. Okay. You like a big frying pan or a big saute pan, whichever one you want. Um, it needs about two or three inches of depth. You could use a little pot if you wanted to, like this. And if you have less chopped meat, you can make it in even a smaller pot. Depends. If you're cooking for one, you've got smaller pots, so you're going to um, accommodate how much you need. You probably would use half of your ground beef and one onion and half of a contadina. If you're cooking for four or more, I like to give my sauce space so it cooks a little bit quicker. So I use the biggest pan I have, which is about a, I believe this is a uh, 18 inch pan um, that I got at a restaurant supply store. And as I'm weeping over here, as you, if you cook too much, the other great thing with this sauce is that you can freeze half of it. Yes. And then you can even freeze it in like a little ice cube tray, pop the ice cubes out, and then have like enough only for like one amount. Right. Oh my God, I'm crying so much. Okay, we step this up. Okay, we cut the onions. Okay. So, where do we start? Let's get some oil going. Here we go, olive oil. 
So, yeah. we're putting olive oil on this. Now, I protect the bottom of the pan with olive oil. Clearly, I'm using an 18 inch pan, so there's more olive oil in this pan than if I was using a little pan, okay? I'm leaving it up to you. You're very smart. Just <laughs> cover the bottom of your pan. You do you. Cover the bottom of your pan in oil and everything will be fine. And then load up those onions. And then you take your chopped onions and you throw them inside your pan. This is very simple. This is the this simplest, <laughs> simplest pasta sauce. It's the easiest thing you'll ever you are make. Ever gonna make. Then we stir those onions. Stir those onions. The olive oil is hot. You can hear it sizzling. Make sure your onions are covered so that they send out that beautiful onion juice that's gonna give your beef a delicious flavor. Yeah, you can see them starting to brown already, actually. Yeah. Now, next up, next up meat. is meat. Traditionally, Italians would use veal, pork, and beef for their sauce. And if I had veal, pork, and beef, I would use it. But today, I only have beef in the house, so we're just making beef. And if you're a vegetarian, you could totally use a lot of mushrooms, because mushrooms cook down. But you could use mushrooms, eggplants, you could like substitute a lot of chopped vegetables for the meat. But we're Italian, so we Listen, gotta do meat. <laughs> vegetables are nice, but it's not bolognese sauce. Okay. Right. Bolognese is traditionally a, a meat sauce, but we're trying to make this for yeah, everyone. But the flavor, the rosemary, blends beautifully with mushrooms. So, here's a note. You want to break this meat up into little pieces. Um, sometimes when you go to the grocery store, you'll see it almost looks like little uh, strings or spaghetti strings. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit easier than this densely packaged meat. Um, that, you, that you get from Whole Foods. So chop it up so that it can cook quicker. And you don't want those onions to burn. So mix them in with your meat because now we've got meat fat coming out into it. Um, mm, it's smelling good already just from the onion. So in the north, rosemary grows wild in the woods. Sage grows wild. In the south, the warmer part of Italy, oregano grows wild. So you're going to find sauces that pick up the flavor of the part of Italy that it comes from because that, they will use ingredients that grow outside their door. Yeah, if you think about it, Italy, sometimes people think Italian food is just one, you know, there's one type of food that comes from all of Italy, but Italy is a lot like the States. The North you know, in the north, we eat and all of our traditional foods are a lot different than the south, than the west coast. And that's definitely true for Italy as well. We're from the north, which is why a lot of our cooking consists of that rosemary and sage that my mom Cream, mentioned. They got a lot of cows in the north. Sausages and polenta is something really corn, uh, known uh, in our corn region. in the north. Okay, so. Also, in the north, you never put sugar in your sauce. Never. Now we're going to help you put sugar in your We're going to hit it with some salt. Yes. I keep kosher salt in a little uh, in a little ramekin so that I could just reach in and apply the salt to the food. Next is our tomato paste. Now, my mother was very specific. We only use contadina tomato paste. That was not flavored with herbs. Yes, nothing crazy in there. And we are brand loyal to Contadina. We are so, brand loyal to Contadina. Shout out, Contadina. <laughs> right. We are brand loyal for 60 years, 70 years since my mother's been cooking. You know, I just thought about something with Contadina. What, I Mom? wonder why my mother used Contadina tomato paste as opposed to Hunts. Contadina means farmer, female farmer in Italian. So that's probably why well, my mother picked this jar of sauce. Email empowerment, baby, and there's a nice Italian lady on the and can. And there's a nice Italian <laughs> lady on the can. That's probably why she picked that sauce. You'd think Contadina was paying us to make this video, but you they're not. Think so. <laughs> Maybe Contadina should watch. Yeah, Contadina, we love you. Ooh, that's starting to look good. So now it's like a nice red, oniony, meaty kind of paste. There's definitely no juice, no sauce no on sauce. it. No sauce. Now. We're gonna put the rosemary in. Now my mother would throw the whole thing in like this and some lucky bird would be at the table and pull out a stem. Yeah. I personally don't like stems. So I always strip the leaves, go ahead. We strip the leaves in 
like that. And I also take some on the side, I chop it up, just chop it up a little bit. Why do I chop my herbs? I, you'll notice I chop all my herbs. It gives you more flavor, I think, because you cut the herbs and you give it an opportunity to kind of bleed into your sauce, the flavor to bleed into your sauce. So we, now we've, we've chopped half of it, we've peeled half of it, thrown it in, and now we've got salt, rosemary, contadina, onions, which are really nice and translucent now, and browned meat. And now, are we adding dried rosemary as well? Yes. We could add some dried rosemary. Now, dried rosemary is more potent, they say, than fresh rosemary. I don't think so, um, but I always add a little. It, it's got a gray look to it. Um, and you top it, give it a little topping. You know, the more flavor you can potentiate, the better. Mix it in, and then we put a little bit of water on top. I get every inch of it by cleaning out the can that way. And then I add a little bit more water. Now, the water part to yes, your sauce, this is, very important. this is very important. You want to cover the sauce. You want to give it a bath. So now, you have this sauce and you poured your water in and what you want is to cover the top of the meat so it's like a little bath so that the meat is taking a bath in the water and creating a beautiful sauce. That's the idea here. You will cook it probably for about an hour, hour and a half, always monitoring it to see if the water has evaporated out. If the water evaporates out, Hit it with some more water, okay? So are you trying to get it to bubble or are you trying to get it to simmer? Because we do leave this to cook for quite some time. Yes. We're going to take it to a little simmer as we prepare the next. And simmer is bubbling, right? And si we are, simmer is bubbling. It's a little bubble on the top. It's not a big bubble on the top. It's a little bubble on the top. There's a difference. Right. We don't want to go crazy here. Also, that Boiling. gets really messy. Boiling is a big bubble. So bring Simmering. it to a small simmer and then take it down so then it just cooks for right. an hour. Yeah. And obviously the water's going to cook off, so you're going to be adding more water throughout the process. Right. Okay, cool. Okay, so while the bolognese is simmering, we are going to do another recipe, one of my favorites that my mom makes featuring sage from the garden. So as you know, we just harvested some sage. I don't know if, what's your favorite scent from the garden? Um, I think sage. But it's so good. Rosemary yeah. is very refreshing. Me it's too. It's like I think sage, but then I smell rosemary and I'm like, wait, no, I like and rosemary. And then I smell fennel, and I like the smell of fennel too, because we have beautiful fennel plants in our garden also. But I think rosemary, if I need a lift, Mm -hmm. Sage if I need a caress. Yeah, that's nice. Sage is very calming. And basil, I think, is like my number one favorite ever. And it's just sweetness. Basil. Yeah. Basil is just sweetness. Totally. Um, okay, so this is simmering, so we're going to make sage with butter, and then Mom's going to show you how you can do it in a couple of different ways. So talk to me about cheese as I prepare some for you. Okay, we're going to be making a sage sauce. So I do like to pair it or complement it with a salty cheese. I generally use a Locatelli cheese or a Parmesan cheese. Now cheese is always best if you grate it fresh. Yes, okay? we're big graters. Okay, so we have graters in our house, we grate. If you don't have time to grate, you can buy cheese in a box like this that has been grated. Okay, but look for something that's been freshly grated. See over here, it says been freshly grated today, grated right here, not grated someplace on the other side of the world. Yeah. Okay. There's so, always, there's even within getting the cheese at the store pre-grated, there's different levels. There's which... different level of freshness and the fresher it is, the better it'll taste. Always remember that. Wait, dad, come here. Special guest appearance by Dad Fiella. <laughs> Welcome to Bloom and Grow YouTube show. You gotta bend Hello, down. everybody. How have you liked Mom's cooking for? Just, just look, people. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great cook. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Okay, bye get bye. out of here. <laughs> 
So we're making a mix of two. So this is a this is Locatelli and this is Parmesan that we're making a freshly grated right. mixture. But you of. could use one, you could use the yeah. other. Now you see the sage here, it's a whole leaf sage. Many chefs will cook with a whole leaf in your sauce. I don't particularly like eating a whole leaf of sage. And I think that if you cut your sage up, it becomes Again, like the rosemary, it bleeds the flavor into whatever you're cooking. I think just little ribbons also are just like way right. easier to eat than like a whole leaf of sage. I think it's right. just a better, you end up getting like a better ratio in the sauce too, like for right. your potato. You're not so eating like a whole what I do leaf. is I make like a chiffonade, you make like a pile. Okay. And then you... Roll, give it a roll. Give it a roll. And then I bend it over. And then you just make really tiny little ribbons of sage. So this way, you have a lot of flavor being. So she rolled, she laid them like this. She rolled them all up like this and then cut them, uh, folded them in half like that, YouTube style. And then is chopping this like that. Oh my God, it smells so good. Okay, I gotta tell you, it smells great. Okay, let's there. trade. I'll keep chopping. Okay, so you put some butter in your in your pan. I'm gonna use a whole stick of butter. Look, why not? <laughs> Yolo. And, uh, it'll make a nicer sauce. So I'm gonna use a whole stick of butter. I'm gonna have a lot of potatoes. Um, you could probably use as much as you want and put the rest in a little jar or container and save it for another time because it just has to be warmed up. Yeah, freeze Once it as it, ice cubes. Yeah, you can freeze it as ice, well, if you can freeze it as butter cubes. Butter cubes. what you're actually right. making is a sage butter. Um, so I'm going to stir my little butter and monitor it. And I think too with this sauce, people might be shy to use sage. Like, you really gotta, get after it with the sage. Like you have to put a lot of sage in the sauce because right. the sage cooks down, right? Right. Okay, we've pre-boiled some potatoes. I'm gonna take them out of the way here. Here you go. All right, so now we got some melted butter here that's beginning to, to, to simmer. What do I have to do with these potatoes now that they're... Okay, now you cut the potatoes in half. Okay or quarters. Now I put my sage in my butter. Oh yeah, baby. If you are courting someone, if you are trying to win someone over, this is a recipe that will win me for romance. you over. <laughs> I won Billy's whole family over. I made gnocchi. My mom has a homemade gnocchi recipe. You can comment below if you want mom's gnocchi recipe because it's we didn't make it today because it's not like herb inspired. But um, I made Billy's family gnocchi with this sauce and I won. Okay. So you're adding salt. We're gonna add a little pinch of salt like I showed you, my little ramekin. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt here. And then I just wanna show you that it's boiling nicely. Um, it's not boiling, it's simmering nicely. And I have now created my sage sauce. That's it. Are we leaving the skins on these potatoes? Yes, leave the skins on the okay. potatoes for our purposes. And you just want me to cut each one in half? Cut each one in half. Now, we have these little rosemary potatoes, these little red potatoes. I like them, but you can use whatever potato you want. I boil them with the skin on. If you don't like the skin on, you can take the skin off. If you don't like boiled potatoes, you can roast them. You can roast them. You can boil them, or you can roast them, or you can boil them and then roast them. If you like a little crispiness to them, it makes a great um, roasted potato once boiled. So anyway, we're cutting them up, and then we're going to put them in a pan. Yum! Okay, give them a little moment to feel the oil. Oil just to protect your pan. We're not giving these potatoes a base, uh, a bath. Right. Notice you can see the potato. You hear the crackling of the potatoes, you know they're cooking. 
And this is important to get the that side as crispy as possible. Right. 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 You want it as crispy as possible. But it's going to be beautiful. You're going to have a crispy edge and a nice soft inside. It's going to be really beautiful. Okay, so we're at the grand finale. The sauce has been bubbling for a while. These potatoes are delightfully brown and crispy. Oh my God, they look amazing. Um, the sage sauce is has been cooking. So now we're going to incorporate the sage sauce onto the potatoes. Do you need a thing? Um, yeah, I think I will. So now we're gonna incorporate the sage butter sauce on top of the potatoes. Oh yeah, baby! But definitely get the potatoes crispy on one side because that's, that's a delicious aspect of it. Okay, roll it around so everything gets a little bit of the sage. So the potatoes are done, right? This They're is done. It. Let's plate them. Look, oopsies, look at that. Okay. Oh yeah, plating plate them. them, that'll look better than me trying to spill it on camera. Here okay. we go, let me, get, let me get all the sage. Oh my God, that looks great. Okay, so now let's talk about the bolognese. So, obvious. Okay, hit it with some cheese. Oh, yeah, I got a mission cold. Hit it with some cheese. Perfect. Oh my god, that looks delicious. <laughs> cool. So, one dish, garden to table done. Okay. Now, let's talk about the bolognese and how, the different ways we can use it. So, we've got some pasta cooking up. And, Mom, you wanted to talk about pasta a little bit, right? Yeah. Let's talk about pasta a little bit. You need to have a pasta that has a hole in it that the sauce could go through. And you can have a little bite of meat inside each little pasta. So this sauce is looking pretty good. How's the pasta looking? Pasta is looking almost done. Um, the pasta, when you cook your pasta, Make sure you boil, the, the water has to have a hard boil. That means big bubbles. It should be- And salt. Bubbling first before you put your pasta in it. Um, and you should have salt in it to make it taste like the ocean. So it's not a shake of salt. It's a good uh, solid pinch of salt in there. I'll just show you um, how much salt I would put in. That's a, a small, lot of salt. A that's a that's a tablespoon to two salt. tablespoons of yeah, salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would put that in, you know, half of this pot of water. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna throw it in to show you. Et voila! The beauty of cooking from the garden is mom just realized we didn't save any for garnishes, so I literally just ran out the front door and snipped a few more, uh, slipped a, snipped a little bit more rosemary and sage to finish. Okay, so let's do this thing. Okay. You're gonna drain the pasta, right? Drain the pasta. Okay. And now we're going to spoon. Because we have a lot of sauce here, we're gonna spoon some on. Now we top it with cheese. A little bit of cheese. Oh, rosemary first. Okay. And now top some cheese. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. Okay, and we've got pasta bolognese. And, and potatoes. Al salvia. So, since we're, I guess, a cooking show now, Mom, I think we have to finish like a, any other cooking show would with a taste test. Um, so why don't we start with the potatoes? And what's like the biggest takeaway from our whole cooking experience today? Um, the takeaway I want everyone to think about is when you cook, these are very, very, very simple meals. Everyone can do it. There yes. are four ingredients to the sauce. There are three ingredients to the potatoes. Everyone can do this. This is not difficult. This is not brain surgery. But the most important thing you got to remember is use fresh herbs. Yeah. If you don't have fresh herbs in your front yard, go to the grocery store and buy fresh herbs. And they will make such a difference in whatever you cook. Keep it fresh, keep it good. And there's so many different ways you can keep fresh herbs indoors. Either, well, first you can grow herbs outdoors if you have outdoor space in a container or in your garden bed. Oh, and but, have the water thing. 
what water thing? The, the hydroponic. Right, or uh, you can use mom's favorite thing, an arrow garden to grow them indoors if you don't want like any, you can use any type of those like hydroponic kind of pre-set up um, herb growing contraptions. Or episode 22 of Bloom and Grow Radio is all about how to have a windowsill herb garden. If you have a sunny windowsill, you can grow a lot of herbs in your windowsill. So right. there's so many different ways to do it and we've got a lot of resources to help you get growing so you can experience this. So yeah, like without further ado, herbs. Cheers. Okay, cheers. I, I cut that half. All right, well, I'm gonna have a whole. Okay. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> it's I, so good. The butter and the salt and the savory sage is so good. And the potato, the starchiness of the potato. Mm -hmm. I just want to eat the sauce. Like that's a really good bite. I mean, you can put the sauce on bread and be very happy mm -hmm. too. Oh just my God. like my rosemary sauce, you could just put on bread like a sloppy joe and be That could be happy. like your butter if you're entertaining, like just have a whole thing of like sage oil butter. Oh my All God, right. that's so good. Okay, next up. Mom's famous. This it looks so it good. Looks like. Okay, ready? Okay. Billy, do you want to taste test with us? No. Okay. Mmm. I don't know how it's creamy. But it's creamy. The pasta is nice. It's al dente. You can chew it. You feel like you're having a meal. Oh my god, it's so hearty. It's hearty. And the sauce, you know, beef and rosemary is a beautiful thing. It's so good. The sauce is tangy. Like the tomato is tangy, but then the rosemary is so present and it really just like lifts the sauce so much. It's really not a traditional tomato sauce. Your tomato sauce is like very unique, very unique, very specific. And the onions and the meat make it so rich and hearty. Um, the pasta makes it so good. It's better on pasta than it is on zoodles, I'll say that. But <laughs> <laughs> So we hope that you all make these recipes. Tag me on Instagram when you make them because I will share them with Mama Fiala to let her know that our community is making them. And also comment below and let us know if you're gonna be trying the sage or the rosemary and how you're gonna be tweaking it or how you're gonna be preparing it. So, bon appetito and keep, keep blooming, blooming and, and keep, keep growing. Do 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 do